Oh, hey, August 10th, 2015, USD 350 <coughs> Board of Education meeting order. Welcome visitors. Lisa, okay. Additions or changes to the agenda? No. No? Nobody had a chance to look it over. I'm going to take a motion to approve. <coughs> Second. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the agenda as presented. All in favor, aye. Aye. Those nay. Motion carried 6 0. Uh, consent agenda is in front of you. I have nothing to add uh, of note. Uh, lots of bills. Purchases getting ready for this month or for the school year. Uh, and cash balance report there on page 43. Bank reconciliation. You know, the differences. And, uh, we'll probably show you this each month just to compare. Uh, uh, we did that last year with the change in the 20 mills and where that goes. It's interesting to see that cash flow difference. But other than that, everything. Thank you, Mr. Mark. Thank you for your motion to approve. Mr. President, I move the board approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Move and second it to approve the consent agenda as presented. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 6 0. End of the business items, uh, number one, 2015 16 budget. This year, due to uh, our drop in valuation and us applying for that extraordinary need aid. Uh, so our timeline's a little different. Normally we'd be approving the budget and moving on with life now, but uh, uh, cover a few things with you. Some of this you've seen, some of it you haven't. On our cash balance is what's happened with those. It's important to look at that each year and what's happening with those balances and how are those changing from year to year. It's not, it's, it is important to look at the total amount and what's happened there. You can see we went up, you know, considerably there. Um, but more importantly, we need to look at our spendable cash. Uh, we have had uh, a lot of money in our bond and interest fund. Uh, you notice from 13 to 14, there was a huge drop. Uh, almost all of that was due to us paying off our bond. That's not a concern. That's what we meant to do. But you can see how these things changed. We've had this steady decline in our spendable cash balance, and then this year we finally turned that around and increased about forty-two thousand. Uh, now keep in mind, about thirty of that is from capital outlay. We use some of our capital outlay funds to help. So really, that is more like twelve thousand rather than forty-two. Uh, but still, it is a positive. This is a, just a graphic of the same information uh, showing the trends there. And you see the big drop uh, due to the payoff in the bond. Our budget, keep in mind, uh, this information I'm going to go over is assuming we do not get any of that extraordinary need aid uh, that we've applied for. So if we get none of that, this is what we'll have to do. Uh, keep in mind that this budget, we established the district's authority to spend the money. You have to have the cash to, to pay for it, but you also have to have the budget authority. You have to have both. Uh, that's why we budget high in most funds. Uh, we're going to budget over 600000 in our capital outlay fund. doesn't mean we want to spend that, but if we would have something where we need to spend that, the budget authority is there, we can spend it. If we don't budget it, we can't spend it. It also allows us to see what money we have coming in. And then our final working budget, after we approve this and are done, our internal budget that we work with, uh, we 
finalize that. Uh, and the crazy thing about school finance uh, be a little different this year, hopefully. Uh, we should know how much we have for the year and uh, be done with it. But we don't finalize that until the end of the year. And we have an audit, you know, we have our enrollment count, and we have an audit, and then in June, we know for sure how much money we've had for the year that we've been spending that money. So <clears throat> this is the, the biggest problem with our budget right now is our valuation decline. Jumped about nine million, about twenty-one percent. All of that due to oil and gas valuation. And what happens when your valuation drops? A lower valuation means a higher mill levy, or you have to drop the budget to maintain the same mill levy, uh, or somewhere in between. And again, we've applied for that extraordinary need aid uh, on August twenty-fourth. I'll go to Topeka. For that, for that hearing, to see if we get that, we should know that day. Uh, Senate Bill Seven is our block grant funding. Uh, keep in mind this bill uh, repealed or altered over 120 other bills that had to do with school finance. It was a pretty uh, complicated animal, uh, and this wipe the slate clean. So some of the problems that we'll have with this, we don't even know about yet. Uh, there may be further problems that we, that we see uh, coming up. General state aid will, should be about the same for the next two years. They lock it in. Uh, except for, they forgot to say this part, the four-tenths of a percent reduction to fund the extraordinary need aid uh, fund. They've appropriated a about twelve and a half million dollars for that this year, and that's funded by all of the school districts who are chipping in for that. So it's not a huge amount; it's about ten thousand dollars. But uh, when we're talking in negotiations, how do we uh, how do we pay for any sort of salary increase? That money has to come from somewhere. Uh, ten thousand dollars makes a difference. Uh, the general fund will now include capers and other figures, we won't have those other figures, but uh, other school districts will. And it doesn't account for any increased costs. Uh, any increase is too bad, figure out how to pay for it. So keep in mind that's what that block grant funding does. Uh, with our mill levy, we levy taxes in three funds, and then we also uh, serve as the pass-through, pass the taxing entity for the Recreation Commission. We have 20 mills for the general fund, and then the others, we set those. Keep in mind, we budget the dollars and then the mills are estimated based on our valuation. So at the end of the year, it may change just a little bit by the time it's all said and done. One mill, about 35000 in tax revenue, and that was 44000 last year. Here's the history of our mill levy, what's happened the last <coughs> two years and then this year. See the LLB, what that's done. We went up a little bit because we went from 30% of the general fund to 33%. We increased that, but that part of our budget. And we made up the difference here. We lowered our capital outlay. Now our valuation drop is what did this. That's, that's the effect of that valuation. And we're going to have to adjust capital outlay just to keep it, uh, keep it reasonable for our, for our patrons. And that total 52.1, so nearly, nearly four mil increase. Uh, our accountant, we've worked with him uh, on several things, and he said the the school districts that he works with, it's three and a half to four and a half mils on average, and a lot of the districts are similar to us uh, with high high percentage of their valuation based on oil and gas. Let me back up a second. This has not been set. This is one thing we need to come to a consensus on. Uh, what are those numbers going to be? And I'll show you a couple more things. Here's what that graph would look like uh, going further back in history. That mill levy would be the highest it's been in quite some time. And this is pretty striking here, too. Uh, we can't just look at the mill levy. We look at the taxes that we actually levy. See how 
much lower we would be in our tax revenue, total taxes collected. So even though our mill, mills would increase by four, it's a huge reduction in tax revenue. And uh, over seven years, we see a reduction of 3.7%. Stop me if you have questions here. Our general fund, again, is 20 mills. That's state law. We collect that, and we now send it to the state. Uh, under the old system, it was based on our enrollment and base state aid per pupil. Uh, for now, we don't have that, but we're still keeping track of that. We'll still do those figures because we don't know what the courts are going to say. We don't know what the new system's going to be. So we'll still keep track of those things. Our enrollment, it's tough to guess from year to year. Uh, I'm guessing we're going to be down a few kids. But again, we don't have to lose, the superintendent's not going to lose sleep over a few kids because they've locked in our funding. Um, our general fund will reduce a little bit, but when you look at the budget, it's going to show a bit, uh, that it's larger. Uh, that's because now CAPERS is flowing through there. I'll show you that here in just a minute. Our LOB was at 33% this year. We had an election to go to 31% um, about a year and a half ago. So that's our maximum from here on out. It's 31%. It's figured on the percentage of the general fund budget, sort of. And the budget's down a little bit from last year, and that's again because we went from 33% to 31%. Our capital outlay has specific uses. Facilities, vehicles, equipment, things like that. They did open that up a little bit with the change in law to allow us to, uh, to pay for custodial salaries or things like that to maintain the building or to, for equipment maintenance, including vehicle maintenance, things like that. Uh, this board passed a resolution uh, in May, uh, that would have been two years ago, and the maximum is at eight mils. That's the maximum allowed by state law. That's forever. We don't have to change that again. And then we set the mill levy depending on our needs. We use this to pay for our lease purchase payments. That three and a half mills about covers that. And that's it. So this three and a half mills, we live is very short in capital outlay. Anything we want to try to do, technology, facilities wise. We need to put off or spend down our cash. We don't want to go too much lower on our cash. Our bond and interest fund, we paid that off in 2013, and we had that balance left that's been transferred, and we're going to use that for our uh, track resurfacing project. So along with the grant and that, just about covers it. There will be some residual taxes flow in. Uh, probably less than a thousand dollars over the next year or two. But the way we account for this, uh, it's not like a business. Everything, uh, almost everything flows through the general fund or the supplemental general fund. We transfer money out into other funds and spend it from there. Um, why? Say that's complicated, but it's set up like that for a reason. At some point, somebody said, "Why don't? Uh, how do we track?" what schools are spending on their food service program. Well, we put the money into the food service fund and we spend it out of there. How are we keeping track of how schools are spending money on at-risk services, uh, services for at-risk kids? Well, we have the at-risk fund, we put money into there, and we spend it on, on uh, teachers and materials and things like that. And now the feeling is, that's too complicated, let's just have one fund. Forgetting that we were set up like that for a reason, but regardless of how it's done, uh, uh, it is what it is. We'll, we'll deal with whatever system we have. Keep in mind that these transfers count as expenditures. And again, I said this before, but we, we budget high. We overestimate, so we have the authority to spend that. Um, at your uh, place there, you have a, a, a paper. It might be easier to see on your on your iPad, you can zoom in on what's called budget funds. If you 
click on the top left square and then click on my documents, it'll come up. So what you see there is the top row would be where the, what the revenue. Where does the revenue come from? 20 mils plus state aid for our general fund. And then what happens from our general fund? We transfer money out of there. We transfer some money to special education. And, uh, and then we use that to pay for any operating expenses, teacher salaries, things like that. Food service fund, where does that money come from? Uh, the fees that we collect, and then we have state and federal aid uh, for that goes into the food service fund. And then we have all of these funds here. Where does all this money come from? Well, for our budget, it comes from our LOB. LOB comes from our local tax levy, goes into that, and then we pay some operating expenses out of that, and then we transfer a lot of that here uh, to these funds, and then depending on what it is for driver training or locational, how uh, we spend it in that way. We also have a textbook fund. Uh, we pay enrollment fees, textbook rental fees. That goes into a fund and we use that to pay for workbooks and textbooks and things like that. And on the bottom row is a little more simple. Our capital outlay, zero to eight mills, goes into that fund. We uh, use that for facilities costs. Bond and interest, we don't have to worry about. That's done. We don't have a levy for that anymore. Federal aid, we get some uh, federal aid just on a reimbursement basis. Uh, our, we have some Title I funding for at-risk, uh, our after-school program. Federal funds flow through there. And then we have CAPERS. The state provides that money. And again, this money no longer comes directly to the CAPERS fund. It's going to go right into this general fund. That's going to be larger, and then it's going to be paid directly out of there, transferred out of there. So that kind of shows you a little bit about how those how those funds work there. Um, we do have a lot of information for the public. website. Some of it we're required to put on there. Some of it we put on there just as a help to keep people informed. We'll have the notice of hearing. That will go in the paper. We'll, we'll also have that on our website. Um, to show cash balances, what those were at the beginning of the year. Form 151 is part of the budget. Prior years, that was Form 150 that shows your enrollment, how you developed your budget. There's a document called Budget at a Glance. We're required to have a one-page summary here. Um, that right there. Nobody's ever asked me for it. Uh, it's there if we need it. And then the uh, budget information document that's in your notebook, um, that's based, based on uh, funding that we used to have, now that it's changed, uh, some of that doesn't apply, but that does give you a good idea of uh, what's happening there. Any questions on this information here? Are you going to go over your, your what you'd like to accomplish here or later on? Um, yeah, I can right now. Let's see. Two trips to Topeka. One uh, I took last week and uh, went up to visit with the director of school finance. We do that every year, take our budget up, and he reviews it. Uh, see if things are good. 
uh, we discussed this application for extraordinary need aid. Um, any supporting documents? If we need to do this first, I'll explain what's happening here. We have two different budgets here. Page 46 is the first one. I just went over all of this stuff here. This is what the budget that I just went over. This shows what our general fund is, would be. This is what we're going to paper. This announces our budget here. Here's our proposed budget. Here's the last two years of expenses and and our mill levy. So the general, LOB, and then uh, capital outlay, right here are the three that we levy taxes for. And then down here, total USD expenditures is our total mill levy. If we get no aid, this is, uh, this is what we would publish, this is what we would go with. This is my recommendation. The second one would be, let's say we do get that aid, instead of 28 mills here, it's going to be 22 mills. That's what that extraordinary need aid will do. It will help us reduce that mill levy and the burden on our taxpayers. That will give us the freedom to raise that capital outlay back up to where it needs to be and help us fund our budget. So we'd be looking at 48.2 to 50, just over 50. That's a big difference. It is a big difference. It's a huge difference. One other document that you have there is, and I'm getting to your point, the budget planning and tax information is another document you have there. The top row shows where we're at currently, and then I've got three lines here. What if we get that aid, and what if we get no aid? Those are the two budgets I just showed you. But then there's some in between. What if we just got half of that aid? What would happen then? I've applied for 200000 in aid. What if we got 100000 of it? What would happen to our local option budget? i will be about, about halfway between. So maybe with our capital outlay or mill levy, we could have it at six and a half and that would put us about 3.6 mills. Now, our options are to publish this budget right now on time, we approve it uh, once we know on the 24th. Keep in mind the deadline for our budget is the 25th. If I would publish the budget, I would publish <coughs> 28.6 mills in our local option budget and 8 mills in our capital outlay. Because I can't publish 3.5 and, and then if we get the aid, say, oh, well, we'll increase that. Once you publish it, you can't raise that mill levy after that. So I would have to publish as high as we possibly could, which would be an increase of over 8 mills, and then we would adjust when we know about the aid. Well. I'm guessing you all will be getting phone calls when that budget goes in the paper with an increase of 8.3 mils, and I would too, and that would create uh, create problems that we don't that that aren't really there. We're not going to do that to people. Uh, so uh, in Topeka, you know, Dennis and I talked through this, and we decided, you know, if the county clerk is okay with us submitting late. That's what we should do. When we know on the 24th whether we get that aid or how much, then we'll publish the budget, and then we'll have the 10 days, and we'll have a hearing, uh, and approve the budget. So that's putting us clear into September before that happens. So I'm not asking for uh, approval to publish the budget. That's not really required by law. Um, I can publish the budget with uh, a consensus of what we ought to do. But and we don't know. <clears throat> right. If we, here's what, I, here's what I need from the board is, what's this number? Our mill levy change. 
if we get $75,000 in aid, I'm going to adjust that capital outlay levy get as much as we can and still adhere to the board's wishes. This one's an increase of 3.9 with no aid. Say so you get the full 200, we'll still be 100 short from last year. Is that correct? If we get the full aid, we'll just be about 31 short. 31. Yeah. From last year. From last year. Yeah. And a lot of that you know, can be made up in capital outlay, just not purchasing as much. you have any idea your chances of getting this? I have no idea. There's a lot of districts applying. I think our, it's a shot in the dark, but I think our chances are very low for the full amount. And there's also districts applying for this extraordinary need based on enrollment increase. Olathe and Wichita, they're gonna see an increase in hundreds of students means they have to hire teachers. So they're applying for that as well. <coughs> but it is a good argument our valuation went down twenty some percent. Mm -hmm. That's it is. Well we don't know when the Romans don't do it yet. I hope so. So if uh, whatever the decision is made, uh, and we should know that day, maybe, maybe it won't be until the following morning, uh, but I would move to publish the budget as quick as we can. Um, so, so I would adjust the capital outlay in my letter uh, to keep that mill increase under four. You're saying it's then, going to take three and a half to make our payments? Yeah, it's going to take three and a half to make our payments. So total mill levy change, you know, there's a couple of moving parts in there. So if the board can come to a consensus on the total mill levy change that we're willing to stomach, is it that 3.9 or less, or is the board... No, what? We can do with less than three and a half in capital outlay. We just have to spend our cash down. Which doesn't make me any wiggle room to pay anything. So, right. right. Okay. Are you planning on custodial fees and things to come out of capital outlay this next time? Or you think no. we can manage it? I think we can manage it way we've been doing. My thought is, I agree, we can't do eight mills. That's just not an option for our community. The four would be... Well, especially when they come out and say that we're getting more money because they put the capers in there, but they don't explain that. That's going to, people are not going to understand what's going on. Very. Right, but that's our job when people Ask, ask, we need to know, yeah. We need to know what to tell them. And here's what our general fund budget would look like. This here shows our local taxes levied. The first column is two years ago, last year, and then our budget for this year. So this shows we had local taxes coming in. Last year it shows we didn't. That's when they changed the law to take our 20 mills, send it to the state instead of sending it to us. So this was sent to us. This was sent to the state. <coughs> You'll see that. 
Is that on here? You'll see that difference. No, you'll see that difference down here, general state aid here. But it's a huge jump. Why? That's our 20 mils. You know, it was always counted in there when they had the school finance uh, lawsuit. They, they considered that. Uh, now that's about the same. Uh, this is another area. Capers aid shows we got none last year, none the year before. Now we've got 242,000. So in the end, our resources available and our budget, they match. Looks like our general fund is going up. Well, take out 242,000 of that, down around 2.8 compared to almost three. So that's a, why would they do that? It's pretty easy for somebody to look at that and say, uh, see, you're getting more money. So if my direction would be to keep our mill levy increase at 3.9 or less. It's not a good situation to increase the mill levy at any time. I just need consensus from the board to move ahead with, with that or a different number. No, we need 3.5 no matter what. We need 3.5 in our capital outlay just to make our payment. Again, we've got it in savings, but we use that. It puts us very low in our capital outlay fund. What was that graph you were showing us? Total tax dollars. Right. So we're not really the total dollars are substantially higher. It's the mills. Right. The share is. The share of that, those tax dollars coming in, would be on, on our landowners, the property owners that don't have any interest in oil. The oil and gas part would pick up less of the share, and everybody else picks up more of the share. Is essentially what's happening there. We still approve it at 3.9. You still that still can fluctuate when we come back. With Correct the numbers, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It just it gives you a bit. <clears throat> that yeah. you just want the top that you think will go. Yes. Can we even approve it for you without having a fixed number? Well, you can't approve it. It needs to be published in the paper and then right. approved, but if but you can we even give you that go ahead or is that something we have to have a meeting after you come back? No, we don't have to do that. If you if if you all have a consensus on what that new levy change, what we need to keep that at or under uh, I can publish the budget based on that, knowing your wishes. Then when we come back to approve it, it can be adjusted down. It's not up. I wouldn't be comfortable going any higher than that. No. Mm -hmm. okay. And even at that, we're still <clears throat> running low, negative. So almost all of that is capital. Uh, you know, I mean, we're trying to get the best of the worst, I guess. Mm -hmm. So if I publish a budget. You know, our other option would be, we know what 
for the decision is on the 24th, and then we have a special meeting to have the budget uh, approved to, for publication. But we don't have to do that if you all want to make that decision now. Say, keep it under four on the increase. I can publish the budget with that. I wouldn't mind coming in for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a lot to just yeah, throw yeah. out there without knowing. Right. And what we're talking about is putting that in the paper, and then the final approval would be after that. Yeah. I'll feel a lot better when you come back to 200000 yeah. So we'll have I'm a special afraid. meeting. <laughs> you prefer to have a special meeting then? Uh, what do you all think? I think I'm fine with that. Okay. I mean, it would be a long way to be. Depends how good he does. On our, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on our calendar, really what that's going to do is that's going to, there's no way we would be able to publish that on the 26th. The paper comes out on Wednesday. We would not be able to publish it then. So we would have to have a quick meeting. Well, really, any time that week would work. So I would have to do them on Friday. And I would publish in the paper on the second. We need to have ten days from there before we can approve the budget. So that would put us at basically September fourteenth. That would be our next meeting. So we'd be having a special meeting to approve the publication of the budget, rather than having a special meeting to final for final approval. So you would know you'd be back in town the 25th? I'd be dead back in town at, uh, on the 24th, I think, this afternoon. But we won't know a number until the 25th, though. Right. Well, yeah. I, don't, I don't know that for sure. I don't know any of the details. I know the meeting starts at 10. That's about all. Okay. They're supposed to give us a decision that day, but this is a new thing. schools applied for this. It's, this is a disaster. How could they not? Well, why would they not, you know? Well, a lot of them didn't see the valuation decrease. Yeah, but still, they're going to say something just to get some extra money. <clears throat> they just got to prove it. So we'll shoot for a special meeting at some point uh, last week of August. Then. I would think we got better than my odds is. It's not every valuation <clears throat> went down as much as ours. No, but you think of the bigger schools with an increase of enrollment, or? This block for me, what does it matter? Uh, I think there's probably a majority that applied than there was not applied. Okay. So will you let us know? I will. I think we're going to have to kind of play that by ear. We can anticipate having a meeting. Wednesday would be better for me with the staff coming back. Uh, would the morning meeting work? The 26th? Or the evening would be better. You know what? I can work around that. We can get somebody else to take Darren. So you you know, heard heard yeah, I okay. okay. That's not a problem. Probably Carl, too. Yeah, I'm sure it's a playbook. Evening. It doesn't matter to me, I don't think. And I can work whatever. Okay. Nothing like no fixed budget when school starts. Do we have a meeting scheduled for September 8th? Is no. This is what we won't, we won't okay. have to have that one because of okay. then we'll just, this question. Right. So go ahead and put board meeting please. If something changes where they, we don't have the decision yet, we'll just have to back it up. Same time? What are we doing? On 7 o'clock? Seven.
Um, any other questions for Mr. Meyer on that? If not, we'll move on to the library board. The library board's approved the budget, and so has the interlocal board. Uh, the interlocal board is two library board members and uh, uh, two board members. Chad was out of town, so we we're making to make that meeting. But Carl was there. Uh, pretty simple deal. It's on page 50. Virtually the same budget as last year, a little bit lower. Last year was the first year we combined everything into one fund. We used to pay some from this library fund and some from our general fund. Everything's combined into one. Right, one thing I do want to point out on the contributions here, the share of expenses, the library contribution, we just put in what was actually budgeted. Actually, we pulled in more revenue than we expected. On your budget, there's a 72 fund, the library support funds. So we left 10,000 in there from this. So in future years, if investments tank, we don't need to, we don't need to take out the 40,000. We can't take that out. We have some sitting there. So that's the difference there. So we just need to formally approve that budget. Mr. President, I move this board through the library budget as presented. Second the motion. A move and second to approve the library budget as presented. Is there any discussion? <coughs> uh, all in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried, 6 0. Special Education Co op Assessments. We have a, a lot of money that flows through our general fund for special education, and then we also have to use our local dollars to pay our share of that as well. And that's what I'm asking that the board approve this payment schedule. It's $198,000 for the year. Uh, the, that's on page 51. The next page shows uh, the increases. Why is everything increasing so much? You know, last year was 178. Uh, 176. We've got about 22,000. Uh, that's significant. Uh, our paraprofessionals uh, in the cooperative, we have to provide health care uh, for them now, or health care insurance. And that's a significant cost to the district. We've known it's coming. The assessments have increased. Uh, so we really don't have a choice in this matter. But does need formal approval. And ours increased more than others because our in enrollment increased. You, know, you can see that how our enrollment went up. A lot of districts went down, so the assessment was more our share. Mm -hmm. Sitting on my board last <coughs> couple of years, I can back up with Mr. Myers saying that there really is no choice. The volunteer we have to offer health care to the professionals. That money's got to come from the districts, unfortunately. So that's one of those what are you going to do scenarios. Mr. President, I have the board approved the assessment payment schedule as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded. The uh, board approved the SCK SEC assessment payment schedule as presented. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried 6 0. Item number four shared staff agreements. We shared uh, Mrs. Volker and Mrs. Souter. Uh, Stafford, Mrs. Volker is employed by Stafford School District. Mrs. Souter is employed by us. We pay Stafford half of the cost, Mrs. Volker's salary and benefits and mileage, and they do the same. Uh, it's a pretty efficient way to make sure we can still offer foreign language and have an elementary counselor. It's a good situation. So uh, we don't have an agreement written up yet because we haven't approved our salaries for the year. So as soon as we do that, we can get that agreement done. So I'd ask that the board approve uh, those 
the agreements to share staff with USD 349. Mr. President, I move to the board approve the continuation of the shared staff agreements with USD 349. Second. We move and second that the board approve the continuation of the shared staff agreements with USD 349. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. 6 0. All right, on the communications. Board member activities and reports. Uh, start with you, Nothing. Lance? Nothing. Barb? Can't think of anything I've done. <laughs> Summertime. Where? I don't know. Ready? I didn't go. You went in my place. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the only thing I have is I attended the uh, South Central Co op board meeting. Um, the big thing was uh, approval of the uh, negotiated salaries. So, Got that done. There was an increase in, in wages. It had a salary freeze for three years. Probably. So, um, you know, this has not been a real upbeat board meeting. It's the same way there. They're wondering how to pay for things as well. So, um, the salary increases that we're given were, were definitely justified. It was just Difficult. Anything to add on that, Mr. Meyer? Yeah. Okay. So, um, administrative reports. Anything from you guys, Mr. No, Meyer? Not much. Um, enrollment's tomorrow, so next meeting we should have some numbers for each grade. Um, Mr. Meyer will probably talk some about this, but new staff will report next Friday, um, and then all staff will start back the 24th. Start school at 27. So just doing schedules and things like that to get ready for all that. Are you ready? Getting there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bergen? Yeah. Been really quiet the <laughs> first whatever days. So, yeah, like Mr. Allen, getting ready for enrollment. So, it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow, yeah. You better come by if you're poor or something. Come by and help. <laughs> see, what, see what I can do. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Thank you. Sure. <clears throat> Mr. Meyer. Uh, these guys hit on some of that. Your enrollment's tomorrow. You have the calendar there. Again, take those copies. We do have that online. Also, if you do the Google calendar, you can get that on your phone if you want. Uh, we have the newsletter out there. All the enrollment forms are on our website, too. We've been updating some of that stuff. Uh, Teachers, again, they'll come back on the, the 21st. Our new staff will be here. We'll uh, kick off our mentoring program. Uh, uh, pretty important deal. Start those folks off right. Uh, and we have our in-service and work days, those first three days. <coughs> um, our focus this year, uh, uh, we've got a, a few things we're working on, new math textbooks for the elementary. That will be a change. Uh, uh, we are reading this uh, School Culture Rewired book. Todd Whitaker uh, as a book study the administrators uh, and I, so we've, we've started that. Uh, we'll focus a lot on that uh, this year. Uh, the board goals from last year are included uh, on page 55 here. Uh, these are kind of ongoing things and last year, you know, the prior year they were very similar to this and we tweaked them a little bit. And, uh, uh, if we could at our special meeting maybe take a little bit of time and visit about these goals as well. So give that some thought. Um, um, how we might want to tweak these. I don't think we need to do a complete revamp. Uh, see if they still apply and uh, give you a better update on what we've done. Where we're at with those. So, so keep that in mind. Um, I'll add that to that special meeting agenda and just need a bunch of discussion with the about that. How many years have been since KSP been in the this? We did last year. We did last year. Yeah. 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 We did a good goal setting session. For the you know, two, three years mark <coughs> aboard, they came down and helped us work through the process. It's been a couple hours long. Yeah. 
Um, I serve on the State Superintendent's Council. There's uh, six dates throughout the year when we'll go to Topeka or Valley Centers and other, other places. So uh, I serve as a representative for the five counties in this area. Uh, our Tiger Pride Night, uh, we started that last year. We're going to do it again this year. Uh, I think it was a positive event. We'll have our all school open house. That's on the Friday the 28th. Uh, and then we'll We'll have the open house till about 6.30, go up to the football field, introduce our new staff, um, cheerleaders will perform, we'll introduce all our fall sports athletes, and, uh, and then we'll move on from there with the scrimmages. Uh, and Booster Club's going to serve watermelon and have some water and things like that. So, but, uh, in case of rain, we'll just do it in the, in the big gym. Uh, summer maintenance, we've got a lot of things yet to finish up. Uh, pretty much everything's been uh, clean top to bottom. Uh, we've got a little, few things left. We've got some whiteboards and bullets and boards to get put up. Uh, the gym floors have been done. The weight room's done. Uh, the yard work, uh, maybe you saw that's that's been done. Uh, that's been kind of a... We haven't taken care of things because he's coming in and got overgrown and looking pretty, pretty ugly. So... Uh, uh, vehicle maintenance, we're nearly all complete on that. Uh, we have those inspected uh, yearly. Uh, the track, uh, they came in Friday. Uh, they were going to be at Medicine Lodge. They're putting in a track there. They tore off the surface and discovered their asphalt was in bad shape. So they need to dump a lot more money into their track to make that thing work. So they came up here, and I was very worried about that. And, uh, but they got it torn off this weekend, um, they're hauling it off today, they got it all in the dumpsters as of this evening, we'll get the last load of the dump, uh, and they'll, they'll start with the resurfacing. So our asphalt is in good shape, better shape than uh, than the contractor thought it was. Okay. It was going to be, so I'll be working on fixing those cracks and uh, start the resurfacing, be done here in a few weeks. So. items to discuss uh, should not take very long <clears throat> and then negotiations should also not take very long who all do we need in executive session um so the principals in uh, and myself okay do we need two separate motions okay. or one? 10 minutes Ten minutes. yeah well we'll do the personnel and we'll yeah do right. the negotiation Mr. President, I move that the board go in the executive session and discuss personal <coughs> matters in order to protect the privacy of non elected personnel with Mr. Meyer, Mr. Olive, and Mr. Burgundy included, and that we return to the open session in 10 minutes. Ms. Ringer. Second. We move second to go in the executive session to discuss personal matters in order to protect the privacy of non elected personnel <coughs> with Mr. Meyer, Mr. Burgundy, and Mr. Olive be included. Uh, we'll turn to open session in 10 minutes. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 6 0. Five minutes. We're Mr. Uh, just me. Mr. Meyer. Mr. President, I'm in the board going in executive session to discuss employee employer ne negotiations in order to protect the public interest in negotiating a fair and equitable, equitable I think I said, contract with Mr. Meyer to be included. And uh, we return to open session in five minutes. Thanks. Move and second. The board join the executive session to discuss employee employer negotiations. In order to protect the public interest in negotiating a fair and equitable contract, with Mr. Meyer being included, and that we return to open session in five minutes. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. Motion carried 6 0. Uh, first up, approve the teacher's negotiated agreement. Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that the board approve the teachers negotiated agreement for 2015-16 as presented. Second. Second of the motion. I thought you wanted to. <laughs> 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 
So moved and seconded to approve the teacher's negotiated agreement for the 2015-16 school year as presented. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried, 6-0. Classified and administrative staff pay raises. Mr. President, I move to the board approve a pay of the increase of 0.8% for the classified staff administration retroactive to July 1st, 2015. Second. Moved and seconded. The board approve a pay increase of 0.8% for classified staff and administrators retroactive to July 1st, 2015. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. 6 0. Library director. I recommend we approve uh, the hiring of Laura Davis as library director. So moved. Second. Moving seconded to approve Laura Davis as the library director. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried 6 0. Library clerk. I uh, recommend we approve the resignation of April Kelly as library clerk. So moved. Second. Moving and seconded to approve the resignation of library clerk April Kelly. All in favor, aye. Aye. Motion carried 6 0. We hire a library clerk. We recommend we hire Allison Smith as the library clerk. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the hiring of uh, Allison Smith as uh, the new library clerk. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried 6 0. Good. Uh, future agenda items. Uh, we've got to finalize our budget and uh, that capital improvements plan. I've been waiting to get approved one day. Uh, at our regular September board meeting, we'll, uh, we'll go to the school facilities. Uh, we'll take a walk around. Um, we'll have an enrollment report how things are going. Look at our site council membership. Very good. Any questions? Entertain the motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Second. Move and seconded to adjourn. All in favor, aye. Aye. Motion carried 6 0. Thank you.